You have Zen Sphere, which is 15% healing. You have Renewing Mist, Chi Harmony, which is 25% more healing. You have Enveloping Mist, which is 40% more healing. And then you also have your Celestial Harmony, which is 10% more healing. All these modifiers come together and you can do so much healing. Big damage here. Oh my God. Oh my God, so much damage to this guy. This guy's gonna die. There's no way. There's no way he doesn't die. <laughs> he had faith. Oh, I thought he died. Oh, he did die. Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Miss School today. I am bringing you a hybrid Mistweaver build guide or fist weaving for those of you who might be coming from Dragonflight to the War Within. This is a very fun build. It is the perfect combination of casted healing and fist weaving they kind of merged it together that's why it's called hybrid so today i'm going to be answering all the questions you have about hybrid build how to play it the rotation stats everything you're, you're going to need to know to play the hybrid build in the war within all right so the most common question i get is when should you play the crackle build versus the hybrid build and i'm just going to answer that with it depends on First of all, it depends on what you're queuing into and how comfortable you are playing with it. So there are some people who exclusively play the hybrid build and that is fantastic. They love fist weaving. They just enjoy it so much. They just play it every game. And there's some people that enjoy the crackle build like you know yours truly who will mostly play the crackle build. But there are situations where one build in my opinion is better than the other. So for the hybrid build, I think it's really good against melee teams. So if you're playing, if you're playing against a team with two melee on it, or if you're playing with a team with two melee on it, that are gonna be pushed in, where you're kind of forced in the position to be close to the enemy team. I think the hybrid build is fantastic. Also, it's very prone. The crackle build is very prone to getting disrupted. Like if you have a melee sitting on you and you try to go for a crackle and they stun, interrupt you, CC you on it, your healing is just gonna plummet. So the hybrid build can't really be stopped, right? You're just using your damage to heal. It's not really something they can interrupt or anything like that you could hit anything pets anything so the hybrid build is very difficult to stop as opposed to the crackle build and yeah i think that both builds work in different situations you could of course play one exclusively over the other but in my opinion i i mostly crackle and then i will use the hybrid build when i'm queuing into like a turbo or a tsg or a demo warlock with pets on holy dk or bm hunter that has multiple pets where i can get that cleave healing off of it that's when i'll be playing the russian jade wind build The stats for the hybrid build are conveniently versatility and mastery. So that is due to the crane style talent here in the Mistweaver talent tree that makes your rising sun kick or rushing wind kick heal with your mastery. Most of my monks are mastery. I've one haste Mistweaver and I have much more healing output and I enjoy it much more when I'm just going full mastery. So that's what I'd recommend as far as enchants and gems go. Uh, for the gems, I go for the Massful Emerald, which is Haste Mastery. I do want a little bit of haste. I would recommend about, I think on the PvP dummy, I think I hit, what is it, 13, 14%, 13% haste, 23% verse, 201% mastery, which I really like. The gems, it are that's what I run. For the enchants, I go Curse Mastery on the rings. I go Council of Intellect on the chest, and I go for Intellect Mana on the legs, and then I just go for speed for everything else. And then as far as embellishments go, I've actually been testing the, what's it called, the Dusk Thread, which gives you more versatility when you're above 80% health. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, honestly, but when I was looking at my healing breakdown, I was getting, what was it, the Energy Redistribution Beacon was about 2 to 3% of my healing, which is fine but this versatility also gives me like 2% more healing, 2 to 3% more healing on everything. So I also increases the damage I do and the healing. So I just went with the dust thread and I've been enjoying it. It makes me a little bit more tanky, which is nice because I kind of go for a lot of mastery. So those are my embellishments. Those are my enchants and those are my gems. I don't want this guide to be long, so I'm probably not going to talk about talents for a while, but on the left-hand side of the monk tree, there's really just a few that stick out from the difference between the crackle build and the hybrid build. First off, you're going to be playing fast feet, which increases the damage of your rising sun kick. I do want to note, if any talent mentions rising sun kick, it also interacts with rushing wind kick. So if you hear me say rising sun kick, it also means rushing wind kick. So you do more 70% more damage from fast feet. And then Feroshi of Zwen just increases all damage to you by 10%. And one alteration that I've seen with this build that I've kind of strayed away from is Clash. So I think if you take this talent, this talent, and this talent, no, and this talent, and you go here, you can go Clash if you want Clash. That's perfectly fine. 
it, it completely whatever you want to play. Personally, I don't. I like Clash when I'm healing a little bit more. But for me, I find myself when I'm in situations with the hybrid build where I'm pushing for damage, I want a little bit more self healing. So I go for the expel harm talents as well, just because I do want to get away when I don't have damage. So that's pretty much the big changes on the left hand side. On the Mistweaver side of the tree, you're gonna be healing through three or four main talents of what you're going to be dealing with. So the first one I mentioned and the stats is crane style. So this makes it so your rising sun kick or rushing wind kick, kick up a gust of mastery to heal two allies within 40 yards. So this makes it so your rushing wind kick is affected by mastery, which is why you want to stack mastery with this build. The next talent is rising mist. And this is going to make it so whenever you use your rushing wind kick, it extends your renewing mist and envelop mist hot, as well as in case people don't know, your overflowing mist. Uh, hot. So this, whenever you use Envelop Mist on somebody, they he get healed for a, a percentage of the maximum health each time they dealt damage. So the Rushing Wind Kick will extend that hot through Rising Mist. And then I keep saying it, but Rushing Wind Kick, this is the big spell right here that you're going to be doing most of your healing and damage with. And this is just a 25 yard cone in front of you that will hit all enemies. This damage is split among them, but for each target it does damage to, the damage is increased by 6% for each target. So it's amazing. It also gives you a small proc or a small buff where it increases the healing of your new miss before four seconds. So this is the mat, this is the animation right here. Um, baseline, single target, it does about a million damage. You can see right here, it does, how much damage do we do? Uh, yeah, a million damage. And then I also get the buff right here, which I think is kind of important. I'll mention why, but the second part of this makes it so um, rushing winds for four seconds increases renewing mist healing by 100%. So what you can do now that we know that rising mist extends hots and that this applies um, that buff, you can rushing wind kick right here, right? You get the buff, you increase the healing of your renewing mist, and then you can extend it this hot with your rushing wind kick. So you can keep going further. I got a second hot there because of the uh, talent here, but that is make that is very interesting. You can keep extending that big hot uh, from the rushing wind kick, which is really nice. And then as far as any other talents go, the maybe the other major one would be Chiji. This is by far 110% the best one minute cooldown in the game. What she does is whenever you use any of your damaging spells, blackout kick, rising sun kick, or spinning crane kick, you heal for additional healing. And then when you get three stacks from your physical damage, you make your Envelop Mist instant. So right now, Envelop Mist has a cast time. If I rushing wing kick three people, I get a proc here for three stacks of Invoke Shiji and it makes my Envelop Mist instant. And she's just so good. She does so much healing. It is wild, but she is by far the best one minute cooldown in the game. Try not to stack her with other cooldowns like your life Ikuna Revival because she's that good. Finally, as far as hero talents go, Master of Harmony far and away by far the best hero talent tree you want to be going. The main reason is because of Endless Drought, which makes it so thunder focused. He has one additional charge. That's that's pretty much it. That's the bread and butter of this build. Everything else is pretty much just passive. The goal with this um, with this hero talent is to build up your vitality. So this is nerfed in PvP by 50% the cap, but it caps up to half your health and all your healing spells and damage spells do it. So just do your damage passively. And then whenever you use your thunder focus T, you take the healing you store and you heal with it. That's pretty much it. It's really, there were some buffs recently recently and it's much easier and much quicker to build up this this vitality and store it so just do your damage normal damage and healing rotation that i'll show you later in the video and pretty much every thunder focus t you should have about a capped vitality which is half your health in pvp and you'll still be doing a ton of healing the cool thing about the hybrid build is that you're going to be using casted Mistweaver PvP talents, which is pretty cool. So these two talents I use 99% of games. So Zen Sphere and Peace Weaver are the bread and butter as well for this build. Peace Weaver makes us over to re restore its cooldowns reduced by 16%. But more importantly, it provides immunity to magical damage and harmful effects for two seconds. So that's really important. Normally you'd be playing Restoral because Mistweavers are fairly weak to stuns and CC when they're stunned. So this will help immune CC or damage while you're stunned which is great. And then the Zen Spheres, uh, it got changed this last patch, but what it does is you have two spheres. You have Sphere of Hope and Sphere of Despair. You can only put one of each out at a time. So Sphere of Hope, you could use on a player, a party member, yourself, where it'll heal your target and then it'll increase the healing you do to them by 15%. So if I Sphere of Hope myself, last 30 seconds, it can be purged, so keep that in mind. And this will make it so they take 15% more healing for me. And then you have Sphere of Despair, where it does some damage, and then the target deals 3% less damage and takes 10% increased damage from all sources, which includes 
your rush your rushing wind kick so this right here they put sphere to spare up and then you go for a kick and instead of 1 million it does a little bit over 1 million it's it's not terrible but i do like it a lot it's a little bit in damage and but it's 10 percent damage from all sources that include your teammates so that's really that's massive that is huge and those are pretty much the two main pvp talents this third slot really depends on the comp so if you're playing against a team with two casters on it i'm gonna play zen focus t because you are gonna be casting in this build if you don't want to play zen focus t you can play disarm if you're playing against the melee right if you're playing against warriors rogues dk's rep pallies any kind of melee uh, you can use grapple weapon and if you want to use either of those or if you're too scared if you're kind of scared you're going to get swapped to eminence of course really good into teams with spamble stuns or that rely on stunning you to get a setup like hunters for example they'll try to intimidation stun you trap you um rmp will try to cheap shot stun you and into a polymorph or something like that this will help you avoid that but those are the main five pv talents that i'm using i don't really swap between many of the others Two passives that I want to talk about before we talk about the rotation. So we talked about Rising Mist that extends your hots, your Enveloped Mist, Renewing Mist, and Overflowing Mist, which is very important. We've talked about our Crane style that makes it so whenever we do damage from our Rising Sun Kick or Rushing Wind Kick, it heals their mastery. But there's two more passives we need to talk about. The first one is Focus Thunder, and the, the spell that this is going to affect is Thunder Focus T that I mentioned from the Master of Harmony section. And I want to talk about T of Plenty. So... What Thunder Focus T does is you press it and it's going to empower one of your spells just baseline before these talents. And what that means is when you press it, Envelop Mist is going to be instant and it has... Uh it does like a little a heal there. A renewing mist duration is extended. Vivify costs no mana. Rising sun kick cooldown reduced by nine seconds. And expel harm gives you a cheek cocoon and it heals for more. The two primary heals you're going to be using with Thunder Focus T are Envelop Mist and Rushing Wind Kick. Those are just your big healing spells. Those That's pretty much what I've been using it on. And what these two talents allow you to do is they allow you to empower more spells. So what Focus Thunder does is Thunder Focus T now empowers two of your spells. And you have control over that, right? You could press Thunder Focus T. And if you want to use it on a Renewing Mist and then Envelop Mist, those two will be empowered spells. Now what TF Plenty does is this will empower two random spells between Envelop Mist, Expel Harm, or Rising Sun Kick. And that's really important to note. So overall you have four empowered spells every time you press thunder focus t and majority of the time you're going to be using it on your rushing wind kick and your enveloping mist so if i just press thunder focus t you could see i have a weak aura here all my weak auras in the description i have two charges of thunder focus t and then two envelop mist that get empowered you it does you can double empower with the random from t of plenty so if i use envelop mist it does not consume the normal charge of thunder focus t it will use the t of plenty and if i use envelop mist again it still hasn't taken it so now i have two charges here i can use my rushing wind kick which is obviously amazing. And you want to use Russian Wind Kick and it reduces the cooldown on that. So that is why it's so good. It, it's like so freaking good. And ideally, what you want to do, and we'll talk about this more in the rotation, is you always want to make sure you have your hots up because you want to get value out of Rising Mist. This is like the bread and butter of the ability right here is Rising Mist. You always want to be extending the hots because you can extend them um, by four seconds up to 100% of the original duration, which is insane, right? So you always want to make sure you have your Renewing Mist and Vote Mist out and then try to go for a Thunder Focus T. You could see I got a Envelop Mist, Rising Sun Kick, and I got two Empowered. So what I can do is I can instant Envelop Mist here, consume that charge, and then I can kick, and then I can kick again. It was kind of odd there. It actually ate two charges, which was... Uh, I know that this spell used to be bugged, so I don't know if it, that bug is still continuing, but you could see my Hots get extended, and I used all my kicks, and it's still like, look at this damage. Like <laughs> I used it tw like two times, and I did three million healing. Like, or three, I used it three times, and I did three million damage. It, it's absolutely wild. The single target damage that this does is crazy. Obviously, um, you want to hit as many targets as you can, because technically it does more damage for each person it hits, right? So you can see it did 1.23 million damage, which is a little bit more than 1 million. So that get that healing gets spread out across your teammates. But that is Thunder Focus T, that is Focus Thunder, and that is T of Plenty. Very crucial passives to understand before you start doing your damage rotation, because this is a this is a build that you want to min-max your hots and your damage output. All right, now let's talk about the rotation. We talked about Thunder Focus T and the amount of charge that it does. And I just want to say that the hybrid build is the perfect combination of Cast and Mistweaver and 
and fist weaving. I think it's a very, very fun play style. So keep that in mind. You are not going to be 100% fist weaving. You're not going to be 100% casting. You're going to be doing a little bit of both. So always, always start the arena by putting a statue down and a port up. Those are the two most important things. The port's going to help you avoid CC. And your statue is really important for the peaceful mending talent where anyone targeted by the soothing mist from your statue or your own soothing mist takes 40% increased healing from your velvet mist and renewing mist. So keep that in mind. Very, very important. The other talent is Chi Harmony, where in PvP, the first eight seconds of Renewing Mist give them a buff. Where's my, where did my Renewing Mist go? Right here. And that makes it so they take 25% increased healing from you. So it is nerfed by 50% in PvP, but that's okay. We can't be OP everywhere, you know what I mean? So the first eight seconds of Renewing Mist. And like I said, the most important thing when it comes to this hybrid build, in my opinion, is to get your hots out first. So again, you're going to be casting right? You're going to be casting, you're going to be using your Soothing Mist, get your Renewing Mist out with, for the Chi Harmony, and then I normally put an Envelop Mist out, and then from here, you can Rushing Wind Kick to extend those hots and to do damage, right? If someone's in range, don't go, don't, you know, don't be too, you know, don't be too scared to push in, especially if your team, you're playing this with like melee or something. I mean, don't be afraid to like push in a little bit, but you're not full on fist weaving, right? You are, you don't forget, you can cast with this build. You have the right stats, you have the right talents for it, so Always make sure you're casting if your team's getting low. Weave in a rushing wind kick. Extends the hots. Really important. And then let's just say someone starts dying. Because again, it's, it really depends on the situation. But the priority is always going to be keep your doing missed out. And then throw an invult missed out. And then if someone starts dying, Thunder Focus T into a rushing wind kick is normally what I do. And then I got an Envelope Mist proc, so I'll use Enveloping Mist, and then I'll Rushing Wind Kick again. And that hot gets extended. I use an Expel Harm, because Expel Harm got proc from the uh, tier of plenty. And I get Chi Cocoon to help myself stay alive. But that's pretty much that's pretty much the bread and butter. This guy is dancing with me. Let me let me dance with him, dash cheer at him. He's having a great time. We're all having a great time on a gr fantastic Monday, Monday night. Dance with him. He's doing great. He loves fist weaving. All right, so we're going to get our hots out again. And don't forget your Vivify as well. So Vivify has Vivacious Vivification. It makes sure every 10 seconds your next Vivify is instant and the healing from it is increased by 20%. So if you combine that with your other modifiers from your Chi Harmony and your Envelope Mist gives, makes it so that your target takes 40% more healing from you, I mean, seriously, I mean, you're just doing, you're instant vivifying, you're rushing wind kicking. You, I use an instant belt mist here. I vivify again. I have another instant vivify or another instant belt mist, put my new, my uh, renewing mist out. I have an instant vivify in two seconds, put my hot out, extend it with a rushing wind kick into an instant vivify. I mean, the amount of healing I can do from not even, I don't even have to cast. All I need to do is rely on my thunder focus T it is insane and then of course you can weave in your healing if you have to right if you don't have thunder focus to you available you can weave in your envelope mist with renewing mists it, it, it's amazing this build this build is so much fun so it, that's pretty much all it is and if you want the full rotation if like just a, you know what i would do again start with zen sphere statue down i would start channeling soothing mist get some hots out if someone starts taking damage, I would immediately Thunder Focus T kick to extend my hots. I got a Rushing Wind Kick and uh, two procs. So what I would do is I would throw an Envelope Mist out, and then I would Rushing Wind Kick, and then I would Rushing uh, maybe do like an Instant Vivify, and then Rushing Wind Kick again. And that's 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 what I would do. And that's my damage right there too. Like look at that one million damage just over every. I mean with Thunder Focus T, it's every what three seconds, <laughs> which is just crazy. It's it's so much fun. I did mention that Chi Chi is the best one minute cooldown in the game, and I will always stand by that. She is insane. So the rotation doesn't really change too much when you press her, but just know that you do not, in my opinion, do whatever you can to not overlap with other cooldowns because she's that good. She she really is that good. So when you press her, you're gonna turn to Chi Chi or you're gonna get the Chi Chi form or whatever, and all of your fit your all of your damage is gonna do more mastery healing. It's gonna heal your your teammates for an additional heal and then whenever you do damage with your blackout kick rising sun kick or spinning crane kick or rushing wind kick you're gonna get a stack of chi that will make your envelope miss instant at three stacks but because your rushing wind kick is a cone of damage and not single target if you hit three enemies with this spell your envelope miss is instant it is amazing and then your envelope miss also puts a an extra hot the celestial harmony hot on them which makes it so they take 10 percent more healing from you which is just insane so if you think about it you have zen sphere which is 15 percent healing you have renewing mist chi harmony which is 25 percent more healing you have enveloping mist which is 40% more healing. And then you also have 
your celestial harmony, which is 10% more healing. All these modifiers come together and you can do so much healing. Again, the rotation doesn't change that much. Normally, I'll just try to get my renewing mist out, but you don't have that choice sometimes in certain situations. I will normally Chi G Thunder Focus T kick. And then look, my invoke mist is instant because I got three stacks and I hit three people. And then I get the extra hot, which does 10% more healing. And that's and then I'll kick again. And I'll just do that over and over again. If I need to Thunder Focus T, I will. But you see, I got two envelop mist there. So what I'll try to do is I'll just use my envelop mist. And then I'll try to go for a kick to get the cooldown reduction. And I'll use a cooldown reduction again on my rushing wind kick, get my hots out. I have my envelop mist out and I'll kick again. And that's that's pretty much my rotation. It doesn't change much, right? Because you're going to be just extending your hots and you have your Chi G. But the amount of healing you can do with Chi G up is what makes it so good. I said it before and I'll say it again. You do not want to overlap this with like Chi G Restoral or Chi G Life Cocoon. You really don't want to. You want to do whatever you can in your power to not allow that to happen. While Chi G is up or if there are enemies nearby, you can do some slight fist weaving with this if you want. So their mist weavers do have a passive called Teachings of the Monastery where this allows you to build up your Tiger Palm. So your Tiger Palm gives you stacks of teachings and it makes it so Blackout Kick has a 20% chance to reset the, ro the remaining cooldown on Rising Sun Kick or your Rushing Wind Kick. So if I Tiger Palm here, you could see I get one stack of teachings in the Monastery. You could stack this up, I believe up to four times. So this gives you an 80% chance of getting a reset on your rising on your, on your rushing wind kick. So if you do have Chi G up and you wanna do a little bit more damage, you absolutely can. Or if you have time to build this up, before your Chi-Gi, you can do that. Because what you can do, ideally, if you want to do, again, a little bit more Fist Weaving, I don't think you have to. You you absolutely do not need to Fist Weave with Chi-Gi or at all with this build. But if you want to, you could Chi-Gi, Thunder Focus T, Rushing Wind Kick into a Tiger Palm, get one stack, and then Rushing Wind Kick again, and then Tiger Palm, Rushing Wind Kick another time. And then you could Tiger Palm again, Rushing Wind Kick into a Blackout Kick, and I got to reset my Rushing Wind Kick. So you could do that if you wanted to. You also want to, you know, Use your instant belt mist whenever you can or whenever you get three stacks. You can do that, and that's certainly an option, 100%. But for me, I, I've never found that I have the time to do that, um, even with Chi-G up, because it just doesn't have enough time. I feel like the meta can be relatively fast sometimes, so I just don't have the time to build up the teachings from my, my Tiger Palms. But if you want to, you know, if you have the time, if there's a pet that you are playing against and the pet's just like wandering near you or you taunt a pet, right, and it comes to you, you can like try to Tiger Palm it like two or three times really quick and then try to do your Chi-Gi rotation. 100% perfectly fine to do that. If you have the time to do it, I absolutely would. Or if you see a Shaman with totems and you want to kill it, you're just like, oh, let me, let me, uh, Kill the totem real quick here. Oh, I have Chi G. Let's start doing damage. Chi G with Tiger Palm, and you just do the Thunder Focus T rotation over and over again. 100% um, do that. All right, as far as macros goes, I don't really use too many macros. I mostly use Arena 1 to 3 macros, but I would say the most important ones are the Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, and Rushing Wind Kick macros. These macros essentially make it so you don't really have to target an enemy to do damage, and I'll show them. So I have this, again, for Rushing Wind Kick, Tiger Palm, and Blackout Kick. If you're just doing damage and you need to heal somebody, let's just say you need to heal yourself, and you Rushing Wind Kick, you can keep doing damage. You can see I'm using my Blackout Kick, I'm using my, my Tiger Palms and my Rushing Wind Kicks without having to target these enemies. That's what these macros do, and they are... I would say essential for any kind of fist weaving or hybrid build. These are, these are vital. These are so freaking important. So I would say if there's any macros that you need, uh, those are the three I have linked in the description. Outside of that, again, arena one, two, three for paralysis and for disarm for grapple weapon. I have kick one, two, three as well. Life cocoon. This one is a staple that makes it so you don't accidentally life cocoon yourself or someone that's you know not on your team, like someone that's mind controlled. Party one, two, dispel. I have this taunt macro. All of my macros are in the description as well. So they are all yours. But those are the big macros I use. I don't do anything crazy. Oh, um, the tiger the tiger's lust one two, like player, uh party one two, and then tiger's lust yourself is what I use. And those are the big macros that I use. Again, all of them are linked in the description in the GitHub. You can take every single one of them, copy paste them. They are all yours. Alrighty, this is the hybrid build. We are playing against two warriors, a disc priest, and I think this is an Ellie and a Frost Mage. So we'll see how this goes. This will be interesting. I think I can just play Zen Spheres here and be fine, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, we're gonna try to do our best to uh I feel like they're gonna who are they targeting? Ellie Shaman? That's fine. We'll put uh Zen Sphere on him. And we'll see how we do. Again, I'm going to put my statue down. We're going to get 
stunned here. Okay. Port away. Don't know what that does, but I'm gonna put hots here. And then yeah, I'm just gonna try to that's pain suppression, so I'm just gonna do damage here. I get willed, nice tremor, beautiful. Put some hots out. Rushing wind kick again. Put my hots out. Dispel that fear. Sweep everything here. Put a hot out here on my shaman. Thunder focus here, rushing wind kick. That's fine. I'm gonna cheat you here too. And rushing wind kick. Rop the dome. Rushing wind kick again. Do damage. Instant enveloping mist. Put Zen Sphere out. Instant Vivify. We're stun full here. We get a kill on the warrior. All right, playing Ellie Warrior. So this is a pretty decent comp to to kick with just because the warriors can push in. I'm going to play this song. I'm going to play Zen's Focus T2 just because we have a mage. Kind of just don't want to have to deal with that kind of with CS. I really don't. So put her statue down. It's on the wrong side of the pillar. So I'm going to have to move it. Put the mage on focus here. Throw a hot out. Might get stunned here. We do. Thunder Focus T and Belt Mist. I'm going to kick here. Stand in the orb. So this. Oh, it barely. I'm really hoping he presses a button. Really hoping Rally's going to fall. I could cheat you here. You could press a button at any time. He does not press a button. <laughs> okay. All right. Envelope missed here. Good. I'll disarm this. Kick again. And cap the, uh, the priest here. I'll sweep both. Or just sweep the warrior. Or the priest. Dodge this. Try to get hot here. Try to get my hots up. Renewing missed. Kick here to extend those hots. Nice. And we're just trying to kick good. Beautiful. We got blocked there. Trying to cast while the mage is in ice block. Just because, you know. I tried to rob that. Good shear. Can't kick me right now. Try to kick. Good. I get precog. Good. Manatee here. Trying to kick. As soon as my kick is off cooldown. I'm going to Thunder Focus T kick. Incap this guy. I'm going to will this. Incap. Kick again. I can disarm the warrior too. Disarm warrior cocoon here. Kick again. And I get precog again, which is really nice. Really hoping this mate, like priest, uh, fears into it. I'm not going to lie. Stun these two. I use clash there. Manatee. Throw a big healing out. Kick. Warrior still has parry. He's a little overextended, but he does have parry. I try to get that poly. He trinkets that, which is fine. I'm just going to keep my hots up on my shaman. I'm going to thunder focus T and I can kick really soon. I'm kicking now. Incap the priest full. Get my envelope missed out. Kick here. I get feared. Hopefully we tremor this if we can. I'll trigger this. Pull it again. I get precog, which is fantastic. Big healing. Kick. Just on the warrior. Oh, please. Big healing. Please. Come on. Just on warrior. Kick here. Kick here. Please. Come on. I'm so close to Cocoon too. Incap Priest. Nice job. I don't know. I just feel like they have two kicks. Two range kicks that are kind of annoying. And I got two warriors. I'm going to be running down one target. <laughs> one target. This mage just completely... I don't know what's going on with that orb. But it looks like we definitely want the shaman. I could sweep these two. Big hots here. I'm going to wall Chi G and we're just going to try to fit. Oh, we're hitting the priest here. All right. I don't mind that. Envelope mist here. We're going to kick again. Oh my God. Look at this healing. And we're going to try to uh nice kick there as well. Don't have focus T. Dodge this. Revival everything so we can't get stunned. Fear. Nice. Rooted. Doing damage here. Dispel. I think I'm probably going to get, I'm trying to stay stacked just because I want the polys to break. You know what I mean? Feared here. Really hoping they're playing the thing that gets me out of fears, but it looks like they're not. So that's okay. Do damage here. I just feel like maybe Shaman's the better target, but I also could be crazy. But I'm extending my hots here, right? You can see just repeatedly over and over. I'm going to incap the mage here. Diffuse magic. Manatee. Trying to get precog. Would love a precog. Oh, thank God. Cocoon you. Envelope mist on you. Hot's here. Kick that. I'm feared. Thunder Focus T. Kick. Kick again. Good. He's hopefully misses this stun, the mage. We have Frangie Regen. Please. Sherry. Come on, baby. Press it. Press it. Stun this. No swap. Doing a little bit of fisting here. 
About mist here? Yeah, I don't have much uh <laughs> much opportunity to uh I'm trying to roll into this orb so this breaks. I get this. Drop this guy back. Nice kick, nice kick. Trying to get a Todd here? Incap the mage? Sure, it's probably a nice block, right? Manatee here. Kick clash that? Todd? Nice job. Incap the priest here. Trying to rop him LOS and sweep. And I think we're just gonna do the oh. Is it someone uh someone may have LOS'd or sorry, AFK'd. Um, but we'll see. Might be coming back after this. Doing damage. Good. That's swap. GG here. Big healing. Belt missed. We're gonna kick. Incap this full. Revival here. Kick. Throw a hot out. Dispel dots. Instant belt missed. Oh, we definitely didn't need to uh, block there. That's a little unfortunate. Get our hots out. We get our kicks, which is great. Feared here. This should break to blade storm, or maybe it's not our blade storm. Clash this guy. Sweep both. Clash. Good. Put a hot out. Disarm the warrior. Nice. Kakunyo. Kick. Todd? Oh my god. He actually lives that? That's crazy. Get Hots out. Nice CS. Incap. Any damage. Please. Todd? Oh my god. How do these people live? GG here. Kick. Todd? Oh my lord. He lived for so long. Holy cow. But let's see how we do it. Put some Renewing Mist out here. Renewing Mist out here. Put a port down. They're going to probably try to hit my mage, so I'm going to put Hots here. Incap that lasso. Hots. No, they're trying to go for my... I'm going to Chiji here. Yeah. Put his end sphere out. Disarm the warrior because he's got no trinket. Hots here. Kick to extend any, any of my Hots. Big damage. Trying to dodge the priest. Sweep everything. That sweep didn't hit the priest. I'm going to will this in revival. Big healing here. Trying to rob the dome. This sphere is half. I'll try to rob this though. Kick here with Thunder Focus T up. Doing a lot of damage. Zen Sphere. Kick. Nice, nice poly. Really, really good. Trying to do damage. Kick. That's swap. So good. Put Zen Sphere up on my mage. Instant Velp Mist. Instant Vivify. Good. Just healing here. I don't have kick up, so I'm just healing. I'm gonna kick now. Dispel the dots. Good. Big healing. And we have kick back up. I'm gonna kick the shaman because that's our main target. Kick that. I'm gonna incap off of that because we I have C grounding down. And we get the 5 1, 36 points, 36 big ones from that one. But yeah, 5 1, first round, I think was a little rough, but outside of that, you could see the 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 damage and the healing that you can do with this. And opposite of the of the crackle build, with this build. You really can't stop it, right? You can use a rushing wind kick while silenced. Can't use while kicked, but you can extend the hots even if there's no target in range. But if you play it with melee or against melee, I mean, it's it's just too much damage and you always have someone to hit. So 5-1 there, pretty good. Healing breakdown, mostly just coming from Gust of Mist, Angel Cheating, Vivify. I think, let me see the longest round I had was three minute round right here where my healing breakdown was Gust of Mist, of course, because you're using the Crane style and Belt Mist. Vivify Renewing Mist and Overflowing Mist because you're extending that with your Rising Mist. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Very fun build. Very fun and just a great build that you just feel like a monk when you're playing it. And that's why I've been enjoying it. So that is it for me. Hopefully this was helpful for anyone who is new to the build, trying to learn it like me. I'm here for you. So hope everyone's a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later.